Staffin on Sky. Yeah. For me to get from Gerlock to, to there was almost 500 miles. You know, and it's just, as you can see it across the water, and it's bloody demoralising. But when I got there, um, it's, it's a huge sort of thing in the back.
family then and friends, Christian? Yeah, well, my family's you know very small. I've got my mum, my dad, my brother. Um, you know, for, 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 for personal reasons, I didn't um, didn't move in with back in my parents. Um, so yeah. Is there a lady in the life of Christian? Well, there is now. When I started this walk, obviously I was single. Um, but Mark, in fact, I'm finishing back in Blackpool on March the 15th, 2014. Well, on March the 15th, 2013, I was walking down the seawall at Folkestone and a pretty girl come out with a flask of coffee to say hello, well done, keep going. And uh, we've been together ever since, really. So I'll be finishing literally 12 months to the day but I met a young girl called Kelly. That's fantastic news. Well, that is that is a lovely little bit of a story in a story in itself, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, one of the things, setting off from Blackpool, I mean, what, what was going through your mind when you when you were planning this? And, and did you have any... There wasn't a plan. Any expectations no, within it? Or? not really, to be fair. I mean, I'd, when, as I say, when I left, I was at the depths of depression. Um, I felt completely let down by the world. And it was me against the world. Um, and I just wanted to, to, to leave the rat race uh, and do something, you know, different. I also wanted to raise £10,000 for Help for Heroes, um, which now obviously... You've smashed. I've completely obliterated. Um, yeah, I have documented it ever since day one on Facebook of what day it is, where I've gone from, where I've gone to, and what happened that day with blogs. I've also took a picture at least every single mile, A, for my own records, and B, to prove where I am. Um, and I've uploaded those onto Facebook. I've took over 24,000 pictures off the coast of Britain. And um, I think I've uploaded onto Facebook about 17,000 of those pictures. That's amazing. Um, um, it, it certainly is. I mean, it, it's. It, I'm absolutely humbled to be in your presence here. Well, and, yeah. and it is, you've, you've undertaken one of the most difficult things that I've ever heard of, to be fair, Christian. And you, I know it's all credit to you. Um, so the finishing line is in sight, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Well, I'm going to be... Um, for certain reasons, and because of red tape, um, I can't cross the line, which my finishing point, a lot of people expect it to be Blackpool Tower. It's not. It's actually South Pier, which is where I started off from. Um, I can't cross the finishing line to a Saturday. Um, now, the date we've chose is Saturday the 15th of March this year. Um, I'm obviously going to be in Blackpool in the next couple of three days. So what I'm going to do when I reach Blackpool North Pier is go firm and spend the next couple of three days getting my head around everything and uh, hopefully managing to borrow a fishing rod off someone <laughs> and sit there for three days fishing constantly even if there's no sea. <laughs> um, you've seen a lot of sea, you, yeah. so you've not actually. So are you a keen fisherman then, Christian? Oh well, I was before I started this. Um, you know, I, it's one of them. I am a bit of a. I love being alone. I love being in my own um, company. I like. I like being on my own, and, and fishing is one of those sports that um, that, that, that gives you that um, you know, to be able to be on your own and, and just it's peaceful, peace, isn't it? That's the word I'm I, I nice, know. As a fisherman peaceful, myself, yeah, you can peaceful. just remove drift yourself, off, yeah, drift up into your own little world. Though. That's that's correct. So let's talk about then the route that you took. Obviously, you followed the coastline right around the country. Yeah. How have you survived? Um, well, it, it, what? With eating, with the weather, with, with eat, with, well, with when I, everything. When I, when, the I first, basics. when I first started, as I said earlier, I'd sold absolutely everything I, I owned, which left me a budget to live on of forty pound a week, which would last me for four, for two years. Um, I stuck to that religiously, and when I first started, I was eating pasta and porridge. Um, occasionally, people would give me like, a free meal or whatever. But as times progress now. Um, are getting looked after a hell of a lot more and, and as I said earlier when I set out it was me against the world but to be fair my faith in human kindness has been completely rekindled on this because you know as time progressed you know the, the, the generosity and kindness of people that I've encountered since I started is just unbelievable and, and, and it made me realize that there are actually more good people in the world than bad and that gives you a little bit more faith in, in humanity as a whole, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, um, you know, as I said, it was me against the world and, and just people have been amazing. You know, people have come out. I mean, people have travelled for miles just to come and say hello, shake my hand, give me some money to buy food or bring me sandwiches. And, um, and that's what it's been like, to be honest. Um, now, 
I've been walking the coast of Britain to raise money for help for heroes, but I've been sleeping rough in some shape or form every single night since the day I set off. Now I have been offered hotels, B&Bs, people's houses. I've knocked them back every single time because I want to raise awareness of homelessness, which is you know, a bigger problem than a lot of people um, can imagine. Um, one third of the real homeless, the real street sleepers in Britain, are ex-forces, which is a shocking statistic. Um, and that's why I've been sleeping rough. Now, in 577 nights now, I've slept everywhere from a cave with a seal, a multi-storey car park, shop doorways, barns, stables, sheds, shelters, pavilions, public toilets, in the woods, on the beaches, in churches, you know, and I've done that every single night religiously. Uh, and it has worked because I get some amazing messages and um, comments on my posts on Facebook now to say, uh, I, you know, someone on message me to say that they saw a homeless guy today and had it have not been for me doing this walk they wouldn't have and they've gone up and uh, you know either give them money or, or, or took them something to eat and, and just a chat and it's worked. There's not just a tag with a homeless person, is there? There's a real life story there, there is, which yeah. is which is always quite a sad one for them to be in that position in the well, first place. And yeah. and yours is is no different well, to that, Christian. Mate, you know, people automatically assume that they're homeless because they were either drunks or druggies. And it's not the case. I mean, I've, I've become friends now um, with every, you know, with, with homeless people, and I do make a point of going out to find homeless people when I'm in the big cities, and I made friends with lots of them. And I've met everyone from a young lad that was 16 sleeping in a multi-storey car park because his stepdad was beating him up, and it was safer for him to be on the streets, to to someone else like myself who had a business and lost everything, um, and, and and everyone in between. Um, you know, it's really sad to be fair, and there's no help out there. I also, you know, met, met, met a young girl who was sleeping on the streets, she left a domestic violent relationship and because in the council's eyes that she left that home, um, which in their opinion was a perfectly good home, they weren't entitled or weren't, weren't didn't, didn't have to rehouse her. Right, so she didn't yeah. reach, reach, it's a bit reach like, the criteria. It's a little bit like, yeah, it's a little bit like if you quit your job you're not entitled to job seekers allowed. Yeah. You know, even if you're, you know. <laughs> It's one of the worst jobs in the world, and and, 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 that, and it's very similar with that housing situation. Amazing. I mean, one of the things is that it's been an adventure for you, hasn't it? To it say the done. very least. Yeah. Some of it, obviously, you've got highlights of that yeah. and lowlights. Tell us about the low ebb and the difficulty of sleeping rough and, and everything that comes with that. Right, obviously, you know, when you are sleeping rough, you don't actually get a good night's kip. Um, you're always, always conscious of what's... Uh, your surroundings um, you know like I'll give you an example apart from last night I did get a good night's kip last night but the three nights before that in three nights before that I'd only had ten hours sleep wow. in three nights that's and you've been walking on the back of that as well yeah well I, in, 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 in the three days I've covered 70 75 miles with ten hours sleep now we spoke a little bit earlier and we we sort of spoke about the concept the conception that people have um, about walking the coast mm -hmm. and I said to you oh it's only about 25 miles from here to Blackpool didn't yeah, it? That's right. Yeah. And, it, and it's not the case. Not, not the way I'm going it's not. It's like from here now I'll be setting off going around the headland of the peninsula of around Haysham and then back on myself to Lancaster you know that in itself is going to be 15 miles yeah. before I've even actually got anywhere. So let's not be confused here. The road systems are completely, all oh right, you use them, but you're following the actual route of the coast. Uh, I am now, I miss Wales because Wales is the only country in the world that's got a coast pass around the entire coast of it. Um, there's also the Southwest Coastal Pass. I've just finished the, um, the Cumbrian Coastal Pass, which at times, well, doesn't exist anymore because of all the storms we've had, um, you know, the only, the only sort of um, memory of that coast path is bits of styles hanging off what used to be, you know, the coast path. Um, I do stick to the coast as close as I can, um, whether that be a coast path, whether that be a cycle track, whether that be the road, a beach, I stick as close as I can to the coast. Um, at times, obviously, I've had to come back inland for nuclear power stations or firing ranges, bombing ranges, um, but yeah, I stick to the coast as true as possible. That's amazing, and, it, and it, it, what are the what are the highlights been of this walk then? Well, because I mean, cause you'll have had some high spots, low spots, yeah. and and really feeling quite gloomy. And how have you managed with all the bad weather and storms that we had? I just got on with it, you know. Um, I mean, I, 
the rain has been the worst. In fact, when I set out on 2012, it was the wettest year on record for 100 years, and it hasn't got any brighter since, to be fair. I mean, it's a fairly nice day today, um, but I've been out there, I've been soaking wet, you know, at times I've been drenched through. I've had to strip off to get into my sleeping bag, and then the next morning, woke up at my sleeping bag to put the same wet clothes back on to continue walking that day. Um, you know, I've also been out there, you know, knee deep in, in, in fact, was it last March, we had, you know, a real downfall of snow, uh, blizzards. I thought it was on my 39th birthday, I was in a blizzard on the south coast at Eastbourne, you know, on the Seven Sisters, which was quite hard going. That's, you know, that, that just battle. I mean, we're stood here on the promenade now in Morecambe, and the wind is coming through, and it is a biting wind that's nothing compared and that's to nothing. nothing and, and, and I'm, I mean, I've, I'm got, I've got videos of me walking head on into sort of storm force 10 gale 8 gale 9 winds and I'm not getting very far very quickly now people one of the questions I get asked the same questions quite often and people ask me you know how many miles a day do you do well it, it's stupid it, you know the most I've done in one day was 33 the least I've managed to do is three. There is, you know, I, there is not a set amount. I don't do 20 miles every single day, and have been. It's it just, it's impossible. And that's down to obviously mainly the weather, the ground, how I'm feeling. I mean, people think I'm some sort of machine. I'm not. I hurt at the moment. I've been hurting now for like the last 3,000 miles. My ankles, my knees, my hips are packing up. But fortunately, I've managed to keep going, and I'm almost at the finish line. And I'm looking forward to some rest. Amazing stories, Christian. Um, just looking around here, I mean, obviously, what what does it feel like when you look back over there and, and you've walked the whole stretch of that?